Welcome to college, the world of higher education. The atmosphere is different, the stakes are higher, the rules have changed. The entire college experience revolves around knowledge. Hearing it, learning it, analyzing it, evaluating it. And in college, the correct handling of that knowledge is everything. College is very important because it's setting you up for your professional life. So working at that level, we look at the integrity of your work. And we look for it to be honest and to be thorough and to be knowledgeable. And so when we write, we want to make sure that that work is reflecting those great qualities of professionalism. Citing is simply giving credit to the person who wrote the words or came up with the idea that you want to use in your own piece of writing. If you do not cite, you are claiming that everything in your piece of writing is your own work. If that isn't completely true, you've just plagiarized. So, what is plagiarism? You basically just take someone else's work and put your name on it. Plagiarism is copying somebody's work without giving them the credit. Plagiarism is when you take somebody else's words and try to use them as your own and they're not. Plagiarism, the deliberate and knowing presentation of another person's original ideas or creative expressions as one's own. So, how do students keep from plagiarizing? By citing the source of their information. I don't know how to cite sources, so I just don't do it. We have the resources needed to cite sources correctly, including people ready, willing, and able to help. So what's the problem? I think that they don't know where to get the information about how to cite their sources, but I think it's really easy. Their teachers can tell them how, the librarians will tell them how, their tutors will tell them how, the internet will tell them how, there are YouTubes on how to do this. If they knew how easy it was, I think they would just go ahead and do it. There are several reasons that you should always cite your sources. First, cite to avoid plagiarism. Now imagine, you've been working on a project for days or weeks and later realized that someone else presented it as if they had done the project themselves. So, Mr. Hurt, I hear that you've written several papers and articles. How many would you say that you've published? Uh, four, four to five. And how much time would you say that you put into a single paper that you write? Usually six months to sometimes, some of them have been at least a year. So when you put all of that time into that work, how did it make you feel when someone else acted as if they were the ones that wrote it? So how does, how does that make you feel? Not good. So why else should we cite sources? Cite to add credibility to your writing. This is actually more of a reason why you should use outside sources, but citing them is absolutely necessary. One of the trademarks of college learning is uh, the ability to make um, intelligent connections between different ideas, different theories, different realities. It's real easy to do that if we're not concerned at all with facts and research. So facts and research are what make our, uh, the claims we're making, the connections we're making um, plausible and credible. Students really need to use outside sources because you need to have support for what you're saying. If you don't use any outside sources, you are basically just giving your opinion. And anybody can do that. And they do. It's called blogging. Using facts and research also helps you learn more information from people that are really knowledgeable in that particular area. The higher someone goes in education, the more specialized their focus becomes. This is college. You're paying both in time and money to learn from experts in the field. Your instructors, the authors of your textbooks, and the authors and creators of library resources. These are people who have dedicated their lives to that specific field of knowledge. You are ultimately responsible for whether or not you make the most of that opportunity. As any instructor will tell you, there are good sources, there's less desirable sources, and then there's sources you just never want to use. Good sources of information include college textbooks, peer-reviewed journal articles, which can be found through the college's library website, and most websites ending in .edu, .org, or .gov. And if you need help locating any of these resources, the Vance Granville Library staff is more than willing to help. Are there any sources you shouldn't use? 
Definitely Wikipedia. That's a really terrible one, actually. Yeah. Magazines. Not magazines. Magazines aren't really that great. Any website that has a lot of colory background or not <laughs> like trustworthy. Wikipedia. Like social media and places like that yeah. that aren't really reliable. Anything that is how-to or 10 reasons why, and these are all things that will pop up uh, quite readily in Google if you Google just about anything. Uh, stay away from them. So now that you know what kind of sources can be used, we need to know when to cite them. Cite your source if the information is not common knowledge. If it's common knowledge, you do not have to cite a source. Um, for example, George Washington was the first president of the United States. When did you learn that? You have no idea. You probably learned it sometime in elementary school. You don't need to cite where you got that information because you already got it in your head. A good rule of thumb, though, if you need to look up the information to get details, you should probably go ahead and cite where these details came from. Cite your source if the idea or definition is not your own. Anytime you give a definition, you should cite where that definition was found. If it's your opinion, you don't have to cite that it's you, because if it's your paper, your opinion belongs in your paper with no citation. But you don't want to leave your opinion out there alone by itself. So after you state your opinion, when you bring in those outside sources to back you up, that's when you want to use your citation. Sometimes there's just no better way to say it. You find someone's sentence. It's perfect. It says all the things you want to say, but it's written so artistically that to paraphrase it just feels wrong. Here's how you handle it. When citing a direct quote, be sure you use quotation marks around the sentence or paragraph. This tells the reader that you're using someone else's words. At the end of the sentence or paragraph, you need an in-text citation. This gives very basic information about your source the author's last name and page number, and an APA formatting the year the study was published. A common mistake college students make is overloading a paper with direct quotes. This is never a good idea. In general, no more than 15% of your paper should be quoted. Instructors need to know that you actually understand the information. Using direct quotes doesn't really let that happen. That's how you deal with direct quotes. Now, what if you want to take that information and put it into your own words? I mean, you don't need to cite the source, right? Wrong. The information is still their idea, even if you put it in your own words. There are correct ways to paraphrase information from another source. First of all, what is a paraphrase? A paraphrase is keeping the overall idea from another source, but putting it into your own words. A paraphrase is not keeping the basic wording from the original source and just changing a couple of the words. Lots of students try to do this, thinking they're doing it right. FYI, this is still plagiarism. So, if that isn't allowed, how are students supposed to paraphrase? Read through the sentence or paragraph from the original source until you are sure you understand the concept. Put the original source away while you write out the idea either on paper or in the computer document. If you still can't do this, you probably don't understand the concept well enough to write about it yet. When you change just a few minor things and act like you created the whole thing out of your head, that's the same as stealing. It's like covering a song, changing a few notes of it, and acting like you wrote it yourself. No matter how you look at it, that's wrong. If you don't paraphrase correctly, and you don't cite your source, you've just plagiarized. At the end of your paper, you should always have a page listing all the sources you've used throughout your paper. If you are using MLA formatting, this will be called a Works Cited page. If you are doing APA, it will be called a References page. If your professor uses Chicago style, you will be putting together a bibliography. Whether your source is a book or a website, the information you need to look for is basically the same. The author, the title of the book, the city and state of the publishing company, the name of the publishing company, and the date the book was published. No matter which formatting style your professor wants, the information you need to gather is exactly the same. There are style manuals for any of the formatting styles your future professors may require. You can find these in the college library. The tutors at the Student Skills Center in Building 1 are also available to help you with any questions you may have about citing sources. And there you have it. This guide isn't comprehensive. It only covers the basics of citing sources. The why, the when, the how. Remember, higher education is built upon knowledge. You are hearing it, learning it, interacting with it, analyzing it, and eventually adding to it. It's more than just a foundation for higher education. It's its very essence.